want anyone doing the reading yet? Not yet. sacrifice and our intercession on Treaty 6 territory. And we have received a lot of um, prayer intentions here. Uh, Bev has sent a, a letter asking for prayers, or pardon me, Susie Moyen has asked prayers for Bev. And Lillian McCollum asks prayers for Elvis Quintal and Hilda Powder. And someone sent a paper with a hundred names on it. And we ask Lord Jesus for your blessing on all these names, this whole um, bouquet of human blessings and needs. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you would bring these to your great mercies today. 
And we bring all this prayer and praise to God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We also remember today a recent saint in the church's life, Padre Pio, an Italian Capuchin priest who was a mystic and had great insight into human hearts and souls. He also carried on his, his body the, the marks of Jesus' own passion. And so as we prepare to celebrate these mysteries, we ask the Lord Jesus to help us to see the wounds that we bear because of our sin and how we can bring those wounds to divine mercy for healing. Lord Jesus, for the ways that we hide our wounds from you, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the ways that we do not wish to acknowledge the wounds that we have caused to others, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And that we may take good actions to reduce the ways that suffering multiplies every day Lord, have mercy. The Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest Saint Pius Padre Pio a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry, Renew the wonders of your mercy. Grant that through his intercession we may be united constantly to the sufferings of Christ and so brought happily to share the glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed, Blessed be the Lord, my rock. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, my steadfast love and my fortress, mm. my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge. Blessed, Blessed be the Lord, Lord my rock. O oh Lord, what are human beings that you regard them, or mortals that you think of them? They are like a breath. 
Their days are like a passing shadow. Blessed be the Lord, my rock. I will sing a new song to you, O God. Upon a ten-stringed harp I will play to you. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Blessed, Blessed be the Lord, my rock. disciples near him, he asked them, Who do the crowds say that I am? They answered, John the Baptist, but others, Elijah, and still others, that one of the ancient prophets has arisen. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered, the Messiah of God. Jesus sternly ordered and commanded them not to tell anyone, saying, the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed. And on the third day, be raised. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday, in the first reading, we had that famous um, text from Ecclesiastes. There's nothing new under the sun. And yet, uh, in these readings this week, something new is emerging. And it's a Messiah who fulfills human destiny not by, not by conquering but by being conquered. And Jesus gradually has to prepare his own disciples to accept this, this new truth. But if we look at nature, if we just look at the world around us, there is this constant cycle of dying and rising. Every year, the trees die off and their, tr their leaves go to the ground. And then in springtime, they rise back to life again, a little bigger, a little stronger. And even in our growing up as human beings, we're a little child. And then the child dies off, you become a teenager. And then the teenager flourishes for a while, and then it has to die off and become an adult. And then the adult lives and grows and does its work. And then eventually, you die off from your young adulthood and you become a senior. So this cycle of dying and rising is already part of our earthly structure. 
But Jesus takes it to its highest level by literally dying in order that the greatest rising, the greatest life of God will come through our <coughs> earthly and our human structure. And the way that we can make this a practice in our lives is when we practice dying to those things that we do that we know are not good for us. When we die or when we withdraw our life force, our attention, our energy, our concentration from our habits of negativity, 